Hare Krishna. We are extremely fortunate today to have two strong uh, preachers and uh, the direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada MS Das today. I would like to read a few words of introduction.
Vasudevaya. So we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 7, entitled Scheduled Incarnations, text number 53. Mayam Varnaya Tomushya Mayam Varnaya Tomushya Ishvarashya Namodata Ishvarashya Namodata Shrinvata Shradaya Nityam Shrinvata Shradaya Nityam Maya Yatma Namoyati Maya Yatma Namoyati Mayam Varnaya Tomushya Mayam Varnaya Tomushya Ishvarashya Namodata Ishvarashya Namodata Shradaya Nityam Shrimada Shradaya Nityam Maya Yatma Namuyati Maya Yatma Namuyati Mayam Varnaya Tomushya Maya Yatma Namuyati Shvarashya Namodata Shvarashya Namodata Shrimada Shradaya Nityam Shrimada Shradaya Nityam Personality of God. Of the personality of God. 
Anumodata. Anumodata. That's appreciating. That's appreciating. Shrinvata. Shrinvata. That's hearing. That's hearing. Shradaya. Shradaya. With devotion. With devotion. Nityam. Nityam. Regular. Regular. Mayaya. Mayaya. By the illusory energy. By the illusory energy. Atma. Atma. The living entity. The living entity. Na. Na. Never. Never. Muryati. Muryati. Becomes illusion. Becomes illusion. Translation. The Lord's activities in association with its different energies should be described, appreciated, and heard in accordance with the teachings of the Supreme Lord. If this is done regularly with devotion and respect, one is sure to get out of the illusory energy of the Lord. You can now repeat. Oh, it's written on the board, is it? Yes. The Lord's activities. The Lord's activities. In association. In association. With his different energies. With his different energies. Should be described. Should be described. Appreciated and heard. Appreciated and heard. In accordance with the teaching. In accordance with the teaching. Of the Supreme Law. Of the Supreme Law. If this is done regularly. If this is done regularly. With devotion and respect. With devotion and respect. One is sure to get out. One is sure to get out. The illusory energy. Of the illusory energy. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Purport by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The science of learning a subject matter seriously is different from the sentiments of fanatics. Fanatics or fools may consider the Lord's activities in relation with the external energy to be useless for them, and they may falsely claim to be higher participants in the internal energy of the Lord. But factually, the Lord's activities in relation with the external energy and the internal energy are equally good. On the other hand, those who are not completely free from the clutches of the Lord's external energy should, devo should devoutly hear regularly about the activities of the Lord in relation with the external energy. They should not foolishly jump up to the activities of the internal energy, falsely attracted by the Lord's internal potential activities, like his Rasa Lila. The chief reciters of the Bhagavatam are very much enthusiastic about the Lord's internal potential activities and the pseudo-devotees absorbed in material sense enjoyment falsely jump to the stage of liberated souls and thus fall down deeply into the clutches of external energy. Some of them think that to hear about the pastimes of the Lord means to hear about his activities with the gopis or about his pastimes like lifting the Govardhan hill and they have nothing to do with the Lord's planetary expansions as the Purusha avatars and their pastimes of creation, maintenance, or annihilation of the material world. But a pure devotee knows that there is no difference between the pastimes of the Lord, either in Rasa Lila or in creation, maintenance, or destruction of the material world. Rather, the descriptions of such activities of the Lord as the Purusha avatars are specifically meant for persons who are in the clutches of the external energy. Topics like the Rasa Lila are meant for the liberated souls and not for the conditioned souls. The conditioned souls, therefore, must hear with appreciation and devotion the Lord's pastimes in relationship with the external energy. And such acts are as good as the hearing of Rasa Lila in the liberated stage. 
A conditioned soul should not imitate the activities of liberating souls. Lord Sri Chaitanya never indulged in hearing the Rasa Lila with ordinary men. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, the science of God, the first nine cantos prepare the ground for hearing the tenth canto. This will be further explained in the last chapter of this canto. In the third canto, it will be more explicit. A pure devotee of the Lord, therefore, must begin reading or hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from the very beginning and not from the tenth canto. We have several times been requested by some so-called devotees to take up the 10th canto immediately. But we have refrained from such an action because we wish to present Srimad Bhagavatam as a science of Godhead and not as a sensuous understanding for the conditioned souls. This is forbidden by such authorities as Sri Brahmaji. By reading and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam as a scientific presentation, the conditioned souls will gradually be promoted to the highest status of transcendental knowledge after being freed from the illusory energy based on sense enjoyment. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the second canto, seventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Scheduled Incarnation with specific functions. Om Magyana Timaranda Saga Timaranda Saga Satsum Yitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Aromisham Sapitam Yena Bhutale Sayanurva Tadamayam Tadati Svaparatikam Vande Aum Shri Guru Shri Rapatamaram Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rasanatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sadhutam Parishana Sadhram Krishna Chaitam Yadevam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Vitashi Hey Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Anto Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Nara Kanta Namaste Bhakta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vrindeshwai Vrindavanu Sute Devi Pranavi Hari Priye Vanchar Padaru Kesha Srila Prabhupada points out to us 
that these topics are meant for liberating souls. Without actually being a liberating soul, one will not be able to enter into these pastimes, such as Rasa Lila and Govardhan Lila. We have to understand how to become a liberated soul. Srila Prabhupada <coughs> also mentions how Lord Chaitanya never discussed Rasa Lila with ordinary men. Lord Chaitanya did give the chanting of the holy name. He, everyone was invited to take part in the kirtan. Now sometimes people question that uh, is this offensive? Because the ninth offense in chanting the holy name is to uh, give the, to explain the glories of the holy name to faithless persons. However, we should understand there's no offense in chanting Hare Krishna mantra. We can go everywhere and chant the holy name. And gradually we want to awaken faith in people. If people begin to chant without explaining to them the glories of the holy name, let them first of all develop some taste and get some pleasure in the chanting of the holy name. And as they develop some attraction for chanting the holy name, then we can go on to explain more about the science of Krishna consciousness. We want people to understand that. We want devotees, we want those who are not devotees to understand the science of Krishna consciousness progressively from the beginning. Just like in the beginning we can explain to people you're not the body, you're the soul. So we can explain the basic, the, what you would say, the, the primary studies of Krishna consciousness. <coughs> that we are not able to control our senses, particularly the tongue. And we have difficulty controlling the mind. How can we ever understand Rasa Vila without being a liberated soul, we cannot enter into such elevated topics. So we see Bhagavad Gita, how Lord Krishna presents Bhagavad Gita, that he begins explaining to Arjuna, first of all, Atma Gyan, the difference between the body and the soul. Without understanding who we are, how can we ever understand who is Lord Krishna? So the first step in self-realization is understanding our own identity, that we are different from the body, that we are all spiritual entities living in a temporary material body. This is not such an easy point for us to grasp because we are conditioned souls and we have been in the material world for a long time. We've taken birth in many different bodies again and again. So it's very difficult for us to get out of the concept that we are not the body. We do identify with the material body. And Srila Prabhupada Therefore, spoke on this again and again, repeatedly, reminding us and telling us again and again that we are not this body. We are all souls living in this temporary body which is ignorant by nature. So Krishna consciousness is to bring people to the liberated platform. There is a program. There's a process, just as it's explained here. We're hearing the words of Lord Brahma. He is instructing his son Narada Muni in how to present the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, how to preach the glories of the Lord. We don't want to go and immediately discuss the internal <coughs> dealings of the Lord in Vrindavan, with his very intimate devotees. 
these are very confidential pastimes. First of all, we have to understand who we are. This is very important. And to understand who we are, we need to also hear this message from scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> Bhagavad Gita Prabhupada described as the ABC or the primary study. And Srimad Bhagavata is going on to higher study. And then Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is more Lord Chaitanya discussing Srimad Bhagavata, is like the postgraduate study. When we understand the science progressively, then we get the good result. Just like coming to Krishna consciousness, we encourage devotees to join something like Bhakti Priksha group, and you come to Bhakti Priksha, and you hear some of the basic philosophical points explained. Gradually, we're encouraged to increase our chanting and to come to 16 rounds. But just because we're chanting 16 rounds and following four principles, it doesn't mean that we're already pure devotees. Right? We have to go on from that point. To come to the liberated platform, for example, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, Mamchayo Vayabhicharena Bhakti Yogina Sevate Sagunam Samati Jaikam Brahma Bhuyaya Kaupate. So, by engaging in devotional service, we come to the level of Brahman. But Srila Prabhupada, in his translation, he puts in, into the English translation, talks about without engaging in devotional service, without falling down, then you come to the level of Prabhupada. So, we have the tendency, because we are Tatasta Shakti, we are the marginal energy of Krishna. So, we're, in our neophyte condition, we are not very stable. And sometimes we are up there, and other times we are down. We are easily affected by the material energy. It is a battle against Maya. And we have to know the program. We have to follow the process which is given to us. Just as Srila Prabhupada established within our ISKCON centers, a very intense morning program which begins usually with the Mango Arti and then of course we have Tosi Puja and then Japa and then Guru Puja, Bhagavatam class. All of these activities, they help us. If we take part in that kind of morning program <coughs> regularly, then it greatly helps us to combat the material energy and to come to the higher platform, liberated platform. What does it mean to be liberated? There's a verse in the scriptures. Ihayasya hariyatashi karmana mana sabira nikilas papiyavastastu jivan mukta saujati. Jivan mukta, a liberated soul. One who engages his body, mind, and words in the service of the Supreme Lord, then he is considered a liberated soul. So, body, mind, and words. We learn to use our body in the service of Krishna. Particularly when we're doing kirtan, we like to move, to dance, clap our hands, we can use our hands also to clean the temple. We use our hands to uh, worship the deities when we're offering arti. So using our body, not very difficult. Using our words in the service of Krishna, a little higher level. We have to learn to speak the words of Krishna, to chant his name particularly and to glorify the process of devotional service, to speak in, in, 
in relation to Krishna, discussing topics which we have had in the association of devotees. So it's a little higher. And then it, body, words and mind, to bring the mind also into the service of Krishna. That is the most important. Maharaj Ambarish is a great example as a devotee. He engaged all of his senses in the service of Krishna. And the very first thing he did was to fix his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindayor. Right? He fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. So we have to practice. Arjuna, when Lord Krishna was describing the yoga process to Arjuna, Arjuna said, well, my mind is more difficult to control than the wind. I cannot fix my mind. But Lord Krishna argued against it. He said, well, yes, I know it's difficult to control the mind, but it is possible. Two things are required. Abhyasena tu konteya vairagyena. Right? First of all, constant practice. What is the same point is being made here also, that we have to hear regularly. In the third canto, in Kapila Shiksha, it is mentioned that we should hear for a long time. It, it's not that we just hear for Purushottam Mas and I'm a pure devotee. That would be very nice. Purushottam Mas doesn't say you'll become a pure devotee. That you get rid of sins, but you can go back to sin again also. This is the danger. So, of course, we encourage people to take advantage of this auspicious time to hear and chant. But don't think after Purushottam Mas it's all over. I'm already liberated now. We have this phenomena sometimes in ISKCON. People come and they get initiation and they think, I'm already initiated, I don't need to come to temple anymore. I'm already back to Godhead. <laughs> My name's in the book. Guru accepted me. He's taking me back to Godhead. So they think it's all finished. It's only the beginning. So we should think also like this, that this Purushottam Mas is the beginning. It's a chance for us to wipe out, to clean the slate, and then to put something fresh on the slate, to write a new message, Krishna, to put Krishna there into the mind, into the heart. It's very important for us to get a good foundation in Krishna consciousness. Just like you're building this new temple, and you know, you're spending a lot of time and money to get a good strong foundation, to put the foundation there. Because without the foundation, what is the good of the structure? So in the same way, for our bhakti kripa, we need a very strong foundation. And we get that foundation by regularly hearing and chanting. Which means, here in the center, coming for the morning program, of course, here in Bangalore, you have many centers, you have many different places where activities are going on. Wherever you are, somehow or other, you have to get the association of devotees. You want to be with the devotees, and you want to put some time into the hearing and the chanting. It's, it's all going into what we would call the spiritual bank account. Right? Just like if you're doing business, the banking hours are very important. You've got to make sure you have money and cash in the bank. If you don't have a good relationship with the bank, then your business would be stopped. So similarly with our devotional service, our banking hours come, particularly in the morning time. We have our morning program which Srila Prabhupada devised personally for us. And there's nowhere else practically. You don't find 
and hardly any other spiritual organization where they have such a strong, intense program of hearing and chanting. Very spiritually powerful. So we come regularly, take part in these morning programs, and of course we have also evening programs. Of course, during the daytime, it doesn't mean we go to the butcher shop or smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol. We have to also be careful to follow the principles. That's also required. We want to be sincere in our efforts to approach Krishna. It means using everything carefully in the proper manner, not trying to cheat Krishna. Because if we try to cheat Krishna, we'll find Krishna is a better cheat. <laughs> he, he won't cheat us. So we, we're not cheating Krishna, but we cheat ourselves. So it's very important that we are straightforward in our practice of Krishna consciousness. We have to try to apply ourselves to this program as given to us by Srila Prabhupada and as endorsed here by Lord Brahma and by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, one thing which we do notice here, Prabhupada mentions about we should not present the tenth canto prematurely unless one is a liberated soul. Now some people may say, well, didn't Srila Prabhupada give the Krishna book? Actually, the first book I ever bought was a Krishna book, <laughs> all in one, you know. I, I mean, I didn't know anything about Rasa Lila, but I did like the pictures. I was attracted by all the beautiful pictures. And taking the book home and finding a lot of interesting things in it, I wanted to, to know more. So someone may say, well, didn't Srila Prabhupada present the tenth canto in the form of the Krishna book. But there is some distinctions there. That when Srila Prabhupada was presenting the Krishna book, he presented it very expertly in such a way that even a neophyte devotee could not be misled, that no one could misunderstand. And Srila Prabhupada also very carefully omitted some of the parts of the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam where the Rasa Lila becomes very intimate. Srila Prabhupada just gave us what we needed to know and he explained it all very carefully from the grassroots so that even people with no prior knowledge could understand everything. And of course, after reading the Krishna book, then I was inspired to go to the temple and to attend the Bhagavad Gita classes and start reading Bhagavad Gita more carefully. So that, that is the desired effect. We see there are many commentators on Bhagavad Gita, but these commentaries on Bhagavad Gita often mislead people. And they simply lead them to impersonalism, or misunderstanding the position of Lord Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada not only presented Bhagavad Gita, but also gave us the Krishna book. Actually, these two books, I see them hand in hand, that they go together. You read the Bhagavad Gita, and you get the proper understanding, first of all, who I am, and who is Lord Krishna understanding Lord Krishna not to be an ordinary person. That's very important because often people, when they hear about the pastimes of Krishna, they think, I can also do like that. Oh, Krishna danced with the young girls in the forest of Vrindavan. I would also, I can also do like that. Right? Prabhupada points out, uh, Krishna is Gopi Janabalava, uh, Giri uh, Jayarada Madhva, Kunja Bihari, right? Kunja Bihari. Krishna is enjoying in the forests of Vrindavan with the gopis. But who is 
Giriz Bharadari. That is only Krishna. They want to be Kunja Bihari, but they cannot be Giriz Bharadari. <laughs> so they're disqualified. But still, so many people fall into the trap. And they consider all of these pastimes of Krishna to be for their own enjoyment. They like to hear Rasalila. We have so many people also speaking Rasalila. Sometimes we go to big milas and we see they're presenting Rasalila. But it's not for common people. What they need to hear is Bhagavad Gita. They need to hear you're not the body. They need to understand what is the actual position of Krishna. And therefore, here in the purport, Prabhupada is stressing again and again the importance of hearing the Shristi Tattva, the science of creation, how the Lord actually creates, brings about the creation of the material world. If one will hear that very carefully, then there will be no doubt in the mind of the position of Lord Krishna, how he is far beyond this material creation. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, I'm thinking particularly Vibhuti Yoga, chapter 10, Lord Krishna lists so many of his opulences, the peace and taste in water, the light in ether, the, the light in the fire, the, 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 the sun and the moon, he is intelligent in man. He is the life of all that lives. Of mountains, he is Miru. Of immovable things, he is the Himalayas. Of flowing rivers, he is the Ganga. Of beasts, he is the lion. Of fish, he is the shark. But then Krishna says, But Arjuna, what need is there for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire creation. So Krishna is describing that all of this phenomenal world, it's all maintained by a single fragment of him in the form of Paramatma, that super soul within every living entity that is supporting everything in the material world. And that super soul is just tiny a part of Lord Krishna. There are three features to the Absolute Truth. Not just only the Brahman, and not just Paramatma, but also Bhagavan. And one who is an intelligent devotee will want to understand the Lord in full. We should not be satisfied with just some limited conception of God to know Him as the impersonal Brahman. So therefore Krishna showed the universal form on the battlefield of Kurukshetra to establish his divinity. That somebody claims to be God, let them show also their Vishwaru. Where are the competitors? When they, of course people that challenge with it, well, you have to have divine eyes to see my universe. <laughs> <laughs> so you are God, so give me divine eyes. <laughs> so many challenges are there in preaching Krishna consciousness. We have to be familiar with them and we want to always be able to give some challenging arguments back to defend the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada, we offer our respects to Srila Prabhupada by saying, Guravani prichari ning nirvishesha shunyavani that he is preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to defeat impersonalism and voidism particularly in the West, Western world. But Srila Prabhupada also preached Krishna consciousness extensively here in India. And he came back to India. As soon as he recruited some devotees there in America, he brought them to India. And he traveled here in India, preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and defeating everywhere impersonalism. And voidism. 
because it's especially here also, everywhere. There's a lot of Mayavada, there's a lot of Goidism, there's so many bogus philosophies. And we need to preach. We don't want to just sit quietly and chant. We need to go out and preach this knowledge, distribute it everywhere. Srila Prabhupada's books are now available in quantity, in mass, everywhere. So it's very great fortune for the people of India that they can also have easy access to Srila Prabhupada's teachings. With the innovation and technology now, everyone can have the scriptures in their mobile phone. You don't even need to have a book. You can have everything there in your mobile. We just, we, but we want to have to also encourage people to read the books. And reading also, we want them to understand what's in Prabhupada's books. And then, when they understand it, they should also distribute it to others, share it with others. It's our Krishna conscious philosophy that we, can't, we want to give. As Prabhupada said, that he went to America to give. So many people went to America to beg. They go there to get money. Srila Prabhupada said, I have come to give what you have not got. Consciousness of God. And he did that by presenting the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. When Srila Prabhupada first went there, he took with him Srimad Bhagavatam. Crates. He had them person he, he supervised the packing of the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, and brought it with him to America to distribute. Because he knew that these books are like bombs, time bombs. You know, people get these books, their lives will be changed. So I had that experience. I got a book. I got the Krishna book. And, the, you know, last 40-something years I've been in Krishna consciousness. How was it possible? It, was, it came about because I got a book. No other reason. So Prabhupada, his mercy is there, or we could say Krishna's mercy is there in these transcendental books. The Srimad Bhagavatam is not different from Lord Krishna. The sages in Naimasharanya wanted to know that after Lord Krishna had disappeared from the world, where are all the religious principles to be found? As long as Lord Krishna was present in the world, they knew he's the personification of religion. But now Krishna has departed. So the sages in Naimisharanya were asking to Sura Goswami, now where are the religious principles to be found? And of course Sutta Goswami replied, Krishna Swadamo Bhagate Dharma Jnana Dibisaha Kalonishtam Drishan Isha Puranarto Drinovadam. That this Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun, and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of this age of Kali will get light from this Purana. I remember, probably Dina Bandhu Prabhu also remembers, when we were distributing these books, we were having, we were printing one volume at a time, because Prabhupada would translate, and then we would print. So Prabhupada translated, and by as soon as there was enough to print a new volume, another volume came out. So second canto part one came, we would distribute it. Then second canto part two came, we then like that, third canto, four parts, and we were just... So sometimes people would say, oh, this is third canto part three. What about, where's the first, what about the first book? <laughs> you know, we had sometimes a little difficult because we are distributing the book, we are asking, take this book. And Prabhupada also said, 
we should hear Bhagavatam from the beginning. But Prabhupada also said, Bhagavatam is like sugar cane. That wherever you chew it, it's sweet. <laughs> so even you didn't get the first canto or the second canto, you didn't get part one or part two, doesn't matter. It's sweet. It's all Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the glories of Lord Krishna spoken by his pure devotees. So we would distribute it <laughs> for that. Nowadays, of course, you have the whole set. You can get the whole set, and you can have volume one you can get from the beginning. But <laughs> try and understand, we were distributing books like this. It was coming one after another. Six canto. <laughs> Six, where's the person? <laughs> it's sometimes a little difficult for people. But still, even then, people could feel the mercy, the message of Krishna consciousness, very pure and powerful, coming through Srimad Bhagavatam, because it's presented by his pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada. And today we are all relishing this Srimad Bhagavatam. Just think, people all over the world are, this book has been translated now into so many languages and so many different people are reading this book. Just like here in India, there are so many other spiritual groups and they don't have books. They don't have so many books as we have. And we often find many other societies which are not practicing Krishna consciousness, but they also have our books, and they enjoy reading our books. Just like I travel and preach in China, and we also distribute these books, we have them translated to Chinese, and we distribute, you'll find that people purchase these books from so many unusual groups, you know, Buddhist societies, Taoist societies, all kinds of bogus, philosophies, but they like to read our books. It's a very interesting, very nice book. <laughs> so, this is Srila Prabhupada's potency, that because they're hearing the name Krishna, 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 even though they do not understand very well who is Krishna, but if they just read these books, then gradually, gradually, they will start to understand. Just this morning, I was speaking at the Gandharvika Giri Hari Temple there, and I was speaking on the glories of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And afterwards, a young woman said to me that, she said, you know, I've been a devotee of Krishna for a long time, but I never could understand who is Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> so that's very common, you know, people all know about Krishna but they never heard about Lord Chaitanya. And it was only with great difficulty that we managed to put in Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. In, for example, the Jaipataka Swami Maharaj put Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet in the temple at Trimandra. Uh, what, what's the name of the feet? Another Padmanabha. So that we have Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet there. And also at Kurmakshitra, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati has put Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet there. But only with great difficulty, because not many people accept Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They know about Krishna, but they're not familiar with Lord Chaitanya. And even those who are familiar with Lord Chaitanya, only very few are familiar with Rupa Goswami. We are not just following Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but we are Rupa Nugas. We are following Rupa Goswami. And we are not just following Rupa Goswami, but we are following Srila Prabhupada. We are Prabhupada Nugas. So by the power of these books, more and more people get the opportunity to also follow Srila Prabhupada and to benefit from his association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, we have Dinabandu Prabhu, we have also Vibhakaraman Prabhu. We have 
We know Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would like to hear Hira Govinda. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took great pleasure in hearing it. The, 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 I think one point about hearing Gita Govinda is you may hear it, who understands it? You to actually understand the Gita Govinda, what is it, what is being actually sung about? It's not just some mundane love affair between a young boy and a young girl, but very elevated spiritual practice. I think that's Prabhupada's mission is to give people. He said, I have two missions, one to defeat the sign, one to establish Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I'm sure many people were also listening to Geek Ovin but not understanding what it was. This is Prabhupada's mission to get people to understand who is Krishna, then hear about his festivals. Just like we hear we hear over and over again that Lord Chaitanya was always relishing the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis. But in Lokchan Das Thakspur's Chaitanya Mangala, he says Lord Chaitanya heard 100 times about Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. So first we understand all these things, then that we can understand higher topics. But specifically nowadays, this is why we see, we read it over and over again in this, this two chapters here, at seven, to, uh, seven chapter and eight chapter, Prabhupada is saying that so many people just professionally reciting. So Prabhupada's main thrust was that professional people won't help you. You have to hear from someone who's actually a person, Bhagavad not just making a bug of business. This is Prabhupada's great contribution. So we have another question here. Someone is asking that how can we understand that reading scriptures will help us in our chanting and also converse is also true that chanting helps us to read the scriptures to understand. Reading, reading scriptures helps, encourages us to chant, and chanting helps us to understand scriptures. How can we understand this interrelationship? Well, you read the scriptures, and again and again, Srila Prabhupada will point out in the purpose, the importance of chanting, and the importance of the holy name, hearing the holy name. So, we read the scriptures and we get the advice, we're encouraged to chant. And when we chant, then it will give us some uh, good purity to understand the message of the scriptures. Chanting will help us to develop more association with Krishna because within the holy name, the holy name includes also the form and the qualities and the lila of Lord Krishna. Everything is there within the holy name. But we just have to develop pure chanting 
to, re to realize how these things are there in the day. So it's important for us to chant. Srila Prabhupada encouraged us first chanting and then reading. Mm. He, some, some, if he saw somebody reading the books early in the morning, he would ask, have you chanted all your rounds yet? Mm -hmm. And if they hadn't chanted, then Prophet said, first you chant your rounds, and then you can read. So he wanted us first to do the chanting faithfully. And that chanting will give us then some purity within our mind that we can understand the message of the scriptures. Okay. Now, if somebody is not chanting, if they read the books, will they understand? Well, they'll understand something. They'll get something. Hopefully, they'll get the advice to chant. <laughs> <laughs> we do find a lot of people read Prabhupada's books, and they may not be chanting. They're not regular chanters. So, can they go back to Godhead? Well, it's possible. Mm -hmm. We know somebody can go, become perfect by hearing, and somebody is perfect by chanting. Maharaj Pariksit simply heard Srimad Bhagavatam, and it was, he could go back to Godhead. Sukadev Goswami, his perfection was in chanting. Prahlad Maharaj was perfect in remembering. However, remembering has to be done by first hearing and chanting. Without, without hearing and chanting, we won't be able to remember Krishna. We have some more questions here? Hello. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Like, uh, after uh, Krishna departed from the material world, unto whom have the um, religious principle taken shelter of? Can you please elaborate that answer? Yes, I quoted the verse which says, the religious principles are now found in the Srimad Bhagavatam. All the principles of religion are found there. We have to take shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the absence of Lord Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam has appeared. Just after the disappearance of Lord Krishna, the Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is a literary incarnation of Krishna. And we, so we take shelter of the Srimad Bhagavatam and all the religious principles are there. So that's why regularly we have the Srimad Bhagavatam class. We want to spend your whole life reading Srimad Bhagavatam. As Yinabandhu Prabhu was just saying, Lord Chaitanya heard the pastimes of Dhruva and Prahlad Maharaj a hundred times. You know, we have to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam Prabhupada said, you read one verse a day, you can spend 60 years, you can spend your life hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. That is a, a successful life. Every day you read one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, you complete the Srimad Bhagavatam, end of the life, you can go back to God. We hope. <laughs> if you've read properly, if you've read carefully, it's not mechanical. We have to read very carefully. We have to try to understand the message as it is being presented. Of course, Srila Prabhupada's purports are very um, special, that they're very clear. Unlike many other commentaries and so on, you find Srila Prabhupada's purports to give a very clear message. The understanding is very clear. And so it shouldn't be very difficult for us to understand everything which is being presented. And certainly, if you go through each and every sloka of Prabhupada's 
Bhagavad Gita with the purport, then you'll get a very good understanding of the philosophy. there's any law against them allowing soft copies. It's just that they haven't been able to come up with the soft copies. It takes, you know, time. It takes people to, to arrange all these things. English, of course, there's mass distribution. But other languages, it's not such a big thing. We do have soft copies for Chinese editions. We have not all the books, but a number of the books, soft, soft copies that are available. I think in Russian also, they do have soft copies. So it depends a lot on the individual BBT offices and how many people are available, how much they can do according to their manpower resources and technology limitations. But there's no restriction. They do want, they do like to make it available. Which language were you thinking of? Kannada. Hindi maybe. Maybe Indian local languages, it might be a while before you get some copies. Because it's not a big market. So to do such a thing takes a lot of time, a lot of labor, and then you consider it's not so worthwhile. Yeah? Any other questions? Speak some fast things. This about the soft copy and the reading is from iPad and reading. <laughs> but you didn't grow up with iPad. <laughs> you're the, we're the older generation. Yeah, we're used to the hard copy. Yeah. <laughs> the young kids, the young people, you know, they're brought up in the mobile age, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they read everything on the mobile. <laughs> it's different for them. They're a different generation. You're speaking for the older generation. <laughs> the holding a book in your hand is like holding something, uh, like gold or something fantastic. You know? uh, reading from there, you know, you can practically see Prabhupada's efforts in putting those words into the books. You can feel it on the iPad? <laughs> well, I don't feel the same. Well, it's there. It's the same words. No different. Yeah, no different. The <laughs>
is that devotee who told me this person when he's no longer in this world. There's one devotee named, at the end he was Kartikeya Maharaj, before he was, this pastime was in his Kartikeya Das Brahmachari. And this, this particular pastime is very important because all of you are thinking that you guys, you were very fortunate, you met Prabhupada, you got to see Prabhupada and have association with Prabhupada. You were very fortunate, we're so unfortunate, we were born after that, that we didn't come in contact with Krishna consciousness until after Prabhupada left the planet. But actually you shouldn't think like this. This Kartikeya Das Brahmachari, one time, very, very old days, he was in Hawaii, excuse the Prabhupada, he was, because he was Prabhupada's servant. Uh, and one day, uh, Govinda Dasi came from the market, our wonderful God sister Govinda Dasi, who by whose mercy we introduced Tosi Puja in all our temples. She came from the market and she brought something called wheat germ. Now, I never met anybody in India who knows what wheat germ is. <laughs> but, but it's not important. For, for our uh, discussion, it's not suji, that's the point. <laughs> it's, it's, some, it's produced from the wheat, but it's not suji. But anyway, Kartikeya thought that when, next time Swamiji, those are old, old days, before we called him Prabhupada. So next time Swamiji asked for uh, halava, I'm going to make it with the wheat germ instead of with the suji. Mm -hmm. And he'll be so pleased when he tastes this. You know? So one day it rains. So when it rains, it gets a little cold. When it's cold, Prabhupada used to like halava, huh? because it's filled with ghee and grains, makes you nice and warm. Hmm? So he told Kartikeya, please make some halava. So Kartikeya went into the kitchen, and his whole bab was, Swamiji is going to be so pleased, I'm going to make it with the wheat germ instead of the suji, and Swamiji will like this taste, he'll be so pleased. His whole bab was like that. The Swamiji would be so pleased, he like this. Then he offered it to the deity, he put it in the bowl, he brought it into Prabhupada's room, Prabhupada took one look and said, what is this? <laughs> Halava means suji. <laughs> With his left hand, he rejected it, said, take it out. <laughs> so Kartikeya, he was a very emotional type of person. Hmm? Then he would say, Babu, huh? So, he was totally crushed. His whole bhava was that Swamiji would be so pleased that Swamiji would just stand and take it out. <laughs> so he went in the temple room and he sat in front of the picture of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. <laughs> and he began to pray. He said, I was trying to please your spiritual son, Swamiji. That was my whole desire. Somehow he's become upset with me. I don't know what to do. And he began to cry. And he was very soft type. He was crying. I was just trying to please your spiritual son. He said, oh, I don't know what to do. Suddenly he heard Prabhupada's voice, Kartikeya? Kartikeya? He ran to Prabhupada's room. He said, bring that halava. <laughs> so he brought the bowl of halava. With great relish, Prabhupada was eating the halava. Then he said, bring more. So he brought him another bowl. Prabhupada finished off the whole pot of halava. <laughs> from that, Kartikeya told me he learned two lessons. One is that Prabhupada is not alone. He was praying before the picture of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. Prabhupada is not alone. There's a whole line of spiritual masters going all the way back to the lotus feet of Radha Krishna Chandra. whole line of spiritual masters offering us the rope to pull us out of this well of material existence. Mm -hmm. Second, Lesson that he learned is that Prabhupada always said the grandfather is more merciful than the <laughs> I have my practical experience. My grandfather used, nowadays we call it a convenience store, but they had everything, you know, all different types of variety of products. But when we would go to visit grandpa, myself and all my brothers and sisters, we'd always go to the side of the store where the chocolates were. <laughs> huh? And our father, who had to pay all our dental bills, <laughs> he would come, no, 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 no you've had enough. Huh? But grandpa, by the backside, he would give us some. <laughs> so the grandfather, he's more merciful than the father. So 
you are all the grandchildren of Sri, grand disciples of Srila Prabhupada. He's your grandfather's spiritual master. He'll be more merciful to you than to us. So don't think you're unfortunate. You're more fortunate than us. And we see it practically. We're here in Bangalore. So many wonderful temples are there. This, the Shringa temple was a very beautiful place. This new temple is coming up. In our days, we just went in the low rent district of town, you know, where you could, didn't have to pay much rent. <laughs> Everything was run down. We painted funny colors. We put a sign around the temple. You guys are like beautiful temples. Prabhupada is giving more mercy to you than to us. <laughs> Speaking about prasadam, I, I can remember how careful Prabhupada was, how he wanted us to, to make nice prasadam. Uh, one time in London, there was a sannyasi there in London, Rebati Nandan Swami at that time. So he was, he liked to go in the kitchen and he liked to cook. So he was making samosas. And he would make the samosa, take it up to Prabhupada. Prabhupada would say, oh no, no, this, this filling, this stuffing you put in, you know, too spicy or too oily or, you know, you find out something wrong with it, and you take it back and make it, make another stuffing, make another filling. And then from oh, pastry, too much dough in the pastry, you know. <coughs> Another time, oh, you fried it, you fried it too much. And then finally you got it right. Ah, this is it. <laughs> now you know what is perfection in making samosa. <laughs> <laughs> the Prabhupada trained his sannyasis even like that. That they could be perfect cooks in making samosas. Prabhupada really cared a lot about the prasada. Every time when we had a program, public program, we say, bring me a plate of the prasada. I want to see what you're distributing. So, you know, usually he'd be satisfied. You see, it's very nice. It's all right. But sometimes it was a problem. I remember one time, especially in Calcutta, and you know, we have the fruit offering in the afternoon. So they brought the fruit to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada sampling it. And then he said, who bought this fruit? And they said, oh, Debu. Debu brought it Prabhupada. Debu. Debu was a Bengali man who used to come to the temple. Not very old. Twenties. So Prabhupada said, tell Debu to come here. I want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> the Prabhupada then, when Debu came in, he said, you are Bengali and you buy this kind of fruit? <laughs> Don't you know how to buy fruit? <laughs> you are Bengali. You should know what is proper fruit. How you can offer this fruit to Krishna. Prabhupada, so careful about these kind of things. To do everything nicely to please Krishna. The Maharaj of England, I'm remembering a past time to England, that uh, actually Mukunda Maharaj told me this story. He was a temple president. But, uh, actually, I'll tell you how he became temple president. In England. That's interesting. <laughs> because we know Mukundu was one of the very first devotees. And uh, way down when Prabhupada was living at the Bowery. And later he sort of got a little sidetracked from Krishna consciousness. When I was temple president of Portland, Oregon, he was living up just across the river. There's a river there. Anyway, the other side is Washington State, and not and Portland is at the top, and so Washington State begins right across the river. So he was staying there. And he would come, and he would, every once in a while, he'd tell me pastimes, Prabhupada, the very wonderful that they never hear. And one time he came, and he told me, he said, I want you to drive me to the airport and keep the car at the temple. 
because he didn't want to drive. He didn't drive his airport. He was going to Prabhupada was calling him to England uh, because they were negotiations were going on to get back to the manor. At first, he was going to Switzerland because Sham Sundar had gotten involved with some mines, and there was a gem uh, show in Switzerland. So he wanted to go. And Sham Sundar wanted him. Uh, Mukunda to be the distributor in the Wash in the Oregon Washington area, so he was going to leave the car for a long time. It cost a lot of money to park your car at the airport. You know, even just for a few minutes they charge you so much. Anyway, so and I, and I was very excited. So I drove Mukunda to the airport and then brought the car and parked it back at the temple. Then finally, after three or four weeks, we got this call. And Mukunda said he's in the. Uh, He's, he's coming to the airport soon, and that I should come pick him up. Now, he was with Prabhupada, we're gonna get lots of nectar. Mm -hmm. So I drove to the airport, and you know, I picked up Mukunda, and I said, so, so what happened? He said, oh, well, you know, Prabhupada, you know, negotiating for the, the Bhaktivedanta Manor, well, they didn't call it Bhaktivedanta Manor then, but, and so he called me there, and, And he, he, called, he called me to, so I went to, oh, that's, that's right, Prabhupada was in L.A. He wanted Mukunda to give a uh, report, so he went to Inc., so he went to L.A. where Prabhupada was, so I knew he'd been with Prabhupada. So he said, all right. He said, well, Prabhupada wanted to know about how the negotiations are going, and he said, that was very quiet. I think was anything, just with Prabhupada, it was very quiet. Then, a few days later, Mukunda called me up. He said, I won't be coming to the temple anymore. I'm going to England. Mm -hmm. And so you won't be seeing me, so don't worry, I'm, I'm going to England. And I said, well, this all the same. Mm -hmm. So then, Sudama Maharaj came with his bus party right after that, who had also been in LA. And I told him, I just brought, picked up Mukunda. He'd just been with Prabhupada. He was very quiet. He, wouldn't, he wasn't like he's usually filled with nectar. He said, yes. He said, what happened? was uh, uh, Prabhupada called Mukunda there and he heard the report about Bhaktivedanta Manor. Then he said, and so what are you doing? Oh, Prabhupada, uh, Janik and I, we have a house in Kelso. I'm working at a job. I make about a thousand dollars a month. A thousand dollars is a lot of money in these days. And Prabhupada looked at him and so, you do not give anything to my book fund? <laughs> and you do not give anything to my book fund? He said, well, you know, Prabhupada, Janaki and I, we have to live. Yes, you have simply become a mula, keeping a wife and working, that's all. You can leave. And Kunda was completely destroyed. He went outside, he ran into Shamsa, and Shamsa said, look, Prabhupada's your father, it's the duty of the father to chastise the son. Prabhupada hasn't rejected you, he's chastising you. You're, you're giving up the, you're moving away from Vishnu, and Prabhupada cares for you. Hmm? Don't take it so seriously. Huh? But he went back to Washington, he took it very seriously, he left everything in Washington, and came to London, and later he became the temple president in London, he became later Bhakutna Maharaj, and so much wonderful service. So anyway, that was, I didn't mean to tell that story, but it was very interesting. But anyway, Bhakutna told me one time Prabhupada was in London, he was very, very sick, deathly sick. Every, he had a very bad cold, coughing, he was like anything. Everybody was thought Prabhupada was going to be. So they were giving him Brahmastra chai and everything. So one day Prabhupada told them, you make uh, chili pakoras. <laughs> they said, what? He said, you make chili pakoras. So they went down to the kitchen, they told the cooks they made these chili pakoras, they bought this bowl of chili pakoras. Prabhupada took two of them and ate them like it was nothing. <laughs> then he smiled, he said, two of these will keep you warmer than a fifth of gin. <laughs> so then the devotees, they couldn't even take a bite. <laughs> you know, this is Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada, when they took a bite. <laughs> so what to do? So they opened the door. Now Makunda doesn't know what happened, he just knows he gave the plate to Dhananjaya. But I told the story in London one time in Vyas Puja of Srila Prabhupada. And he told the other half of the story. He said, this is Prabhupada Maha. So Dhananjaya, he didn't even look at it. He just put it under his coat, uh, under his chatter, 
He ran down to the basement, he turned on all the lights, he knew anybody would know he had Prabhupada's, right from Prabhupada's place, you know, Mom, Mom, just... <laughs> He turned on all the lights, he reached out to the plate, he punched up the floor. <laughs> Steve was coming out. <laughs> Tears were coming from the <laughs> But it was Prabhupada Maha. <laughs> yeah, whenever they distribute Prabhupada's Maha, usually Prabhupada, they mix everything together. Yes. He wouldn't let you, you I want this piece, I want that. He didn't like that. He yes. said, just mix everything up. The sweet and the salty, all of mixed together. And then he give some piece to everyone. No, you shouldn't be discriminating. You shouldn't say, I want the sweet, I want the, you know. <laughs> it's all Maha Prasada. I was thinking about uh, how Prabhupada dealt with different devotees, like he was so much concerned about people particularly who had rendered some valuable service to the movement. There was uh, one devotee, well, Madhubisa, Madhubisa Maharaj at the time. He had been preaching in India and, you know, he's a wonderful kirtanier. And mm. Prabhupada saw that his desire to have more preaching. He wasn't getting same fulfillment in India, so Prabhupada sent him off to Australia to become the GBC there. And he did some wonderful preaching there. He really helped to establish so much the Australian Yatra to what it is today. Like the Melbourne Center, which they have there, they acquired that property. It's actually a, one of the uh, state heritage sites. It's a protected building. It's a, it's a ISKCON Center. So he did so much preaching, but he got in some difficulty, he had some fall down, and uh, when, when a devotee announced it publicly, then Prabhupada was very angry and said, why are you telling people like this? He said, you should keep this quiet. He said, you're making it very difficult for him to come back. So Prabhupada was so much concerned that this man had done so much valuable service, even though he had had some spiritual difficulties in his sannyas ashram, Srila Prabhupada didn't want him to go away from Krishna consciousness. And another time, in Bhaktivedanta Manor, the person who had been the GBC for the Bhaktivedanta Manor actually was uh, Shamsunda Prabhu. You know, as you were saying, got involved with business, the gems and everything like that. So the, the, the Bajahari was the temple president. And he was saying, he, he came to Prabhupada to voice some criticism about Shamsunda. You know, because he's saying he's just trying to do business, he's only in business, he's not taking care of our society, he's not worried about it. And he was trying to criticize him. And as soon as he began to say something, Prabhupada turned to a sannyasi who was in the room and he said, tell him to leave. In other words, Bajahari, who was the temple president, mm -hmm. Prabhupada was ordering the sannyasi to get him out, tell him to leave. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada didn't want to hear criticism of devotees. He didn't want to hear it done in a hostile manner. After this, so they got the temple president, Bajahari, he had to leave the room. And after he left the room, then Prabhupada turned to the sannyasi and said, so what is his point? What is he saying? What is the problem? But he, Prabhupada cared so much for devotees because Shamsundar was one of the persons who had done so much service for Prabhupada. He had brought George Harrison into Krishna consciousness. And because he brought George Harrison in, he, George of course bought the Bhaktivedanta Manor, he paid for it, he donated it to the movement. 
and he made the records and he paid for the first publishing of the Krishna book. You know the story? Uh, you know the story about Krishna? Go ahead. Uh, told me this story personally when Kartik in Vrindavan. The Prabhupada at that time was staying in London at J George, uh, John Lennon's estate, Tittenhurst Park. And uh, the manuscript for Krishna book arrived. And Prabhupada was very excited. He was looking through the book, the manuscript. You know. And along with the manuscript, they sent the estimate that it was going to cost about $20,000 to print it. Nowadays, $20,000 is the mortgage payment. But in those days, $20,000 a lot of money. This is 1969, you know, That's like saying, you know, it's going to cost $200,000, you know. So everybody said, where are we going to get that type of money? And they were discussing different ideas. And then Prabhupada looked to Shamsunar, you simply tell your friend George Harrison to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and Shamsunar said, but, but Prabhupada, that's not my relationship with him. I don't ask him for anything. Whatever he's doing, he's doing on his own. He said, no, you can ask him. <laughs> no, what? you don't understand. I've never asked him for anything. He bought the wood for the beams in the temple room. He paid for the, the marble for the floor. Tomorrow we're going to buy the marble for the altar. All those things he just volunteered himself. I never asked him. That's not my relationship with him. No, no, you can ask. <laughs> but no, but if I ask him for something, I'm like everybody else, just after his money. No, no, you can ask him. <laughs> Krishna will help you. So whenever the guru gives an order, he also gives the mercy to serve the that order. Hmm? So then Shams that this is it. I worked so hard to make this relationship. He doesn't understand. <laughs> so there was some famous sculpture of the sculpture laureate of London. I can't remember his name. Anyway, he was going to help them pick the proper marble and make the design for the altar. So the three of them, they went to the marble markets of London and they were looking in all day long. There was no chance to ask Prabhupada, ask George. So then they went to George's house for prasadam and during prasadam he couldn't find any opportunity to present his petition to George Harrison. Then they went and they sat in George's drawing room. Now this must be a British thing, I don't know what a drawing room is, but you don't draw there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they went to the drawing room, they're sitting there, and then, and then Samson realized, this is it, after this, everybody's going home, and I haven't asked George. Yeah. Then he got an idea. <laughs> you know in politics how to make somebody else the bad guy? <laughs> I'm going to teach you right now. <laughs> Suddenly there was a lull, there was a pause in the conversation. So then uh, Shamsundar got all his courage up. He said, uh, George, the manuscript for Krishna book has arrived. And George perked up. He said, yes? He said, yeah, Prabhupada was very excited. He said, yes? And Prabhupada asked me to ask you. <laughs> I think make somebody else the bad guy. <laughs> so Prabhupada asked me to ask you if you could pay for it. And George Harrison got a little down. Mm. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> About twenty thousand oh. dollars. Then George Harrison's face went down even. <laughs> Right at that moment, either landed right on top of the house or landed right outside the house because the flash and the thunder were, were simultaneous. <laughs> and it was an old English house where the, the, the putty is dried up and receded so the, all the windows were rattling. <laughs> like that, the lights went blink, 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 and they were in darkness. And Shamsun just said, I told him, it's not a good idea, I worked so hard to make this relationship, now everything is finished, it's all finished. It seemed like eternity, the lights were out. Suddenly, lights blinked on, and George Harrison had a smile from ear to ear. And he said, well after that, how can I refuse? <laughs> And therefore we have Krishna. <laughs> oh. I don't know if you knew the story of how he got that book. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then when George Harrison agreed to pay for it, Prabhupada said, you can also write um, a few words in, in the book, introducing the book. It will be nice if you write a message to the readers. So, <laughs> George Harrison, you know, that, that, was, that was another issue, to get him to agree to write something. Because he didn't really want to, he didn't really want to put his name there. He didn't really like the, you know, that he was promoting Krishna consciousness. But anyway, gradually, you know, they convinced, you know, he should write something. But then, when he wrote something, he wanted to put some quote by somebody like, uh, what, autobiography of a yogi who wrote them? Uh, Yogananda, Paramahamsa Yogananda. You know, because George had read these kind of books before meeting the devotees, you see. So he had some impersonal ideas. So he wanted to put something in this book, like some, some impersonal. So it was the whole issue to convince him, you know, you can't put this, you know, you can't put this. And they explained to him that this, this person, he is, he, he is using the name of Krishna, but he is not presenting the message of Krishna. They're taking the name of Krishna, but not the message of Krishna. So, who is actually, why should we put their name in Krishna's book? You know, he wanted to put something about Paramahansa Yogananda or Vivekananda or something like this. He's going to put that in the preface there. Do you know words from Apple? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so George was, you know, there was, it took a, a lot of back and forth, you know, talking with him and negotiating <laughs> and to get in the, what he wanted. He wanted, George wanted to put some impersonalism in the, and he tried to tell him, you know, this is not what Krishna, this is about Krishna. It's not about impersonalism. It's, we don't want to put the Maya body forth. We want to give Krishna's message, not Vivekananda's message, not Yogananda's message. We want to present the message of Krishna. So finally, anyway, they got him to agree to get the preface done. You can read the details. It's very nicely explained in the book, which has come out by Sham Sundar now. Yeah. Hunting rhinos with the Swamiji, and he explains in detail all the arguments and they had. And sometimes George would would, would even argue with them. You know, that, that, you know, I think this, I think Vivekananda is right. I think they're right. You know, I think they're right. I think what they're teaching is right. And Sham Sundar would get his, quench his fist and roll up his sleeves and say, "Okay, come on, then." <laughs> 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 and George would say, okay, okay. <laughs> it would, you know, dealing with people like with big stars like that, George Harrison, you know, he was one of the most famous people in the world at the time. And, you know, they made him a devotee, they brought him to Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada appreciated how Chan Sundar had done so much for the Krishna consciousness movement. And when he had some little bit deviation and somebody was criticizing him, then Prabhupada immediately cut it. He didn't let that devotee criticize him. He said, you get out of the room. <laughs> and then Prabhupada inquired, what is going on? What is actually the problem? So Prabhupada recognized so much that any service which had been done by those devotees Particularly in the beginning, in those days when the devotees were so few and there was no money, they had nothing. How many difficulties they went through. I remember when I got initiation, I was telling how I got initiated in London uh, in 1971. I was initiated with Subhad and Mahavishnu and we were about 18. And after the initiation ceremony that afternoon, Prabhupada called the temple president into his room 
And he said, you know, I gave all your men initiation. None of them gave me any Guru Dakshin. <laughs> <laughs> the temple president said, Prabhupada, they don't have any money. <laughs> Nothing. Right? Devotees in those days, especially in London, <laughs> we, were, we didn't have funds. Uh, so we, even we got initiation, we didn't have money. So that afternoon we went on book distribution and whatever books we sold, we, then we gave that money to Prabhupada. That was our offering to Prabhupada. I was reading later on Bhakti Charu's book, and he was writing, his, he wrote his book about how he came to Krishna consciousness. And he also said when he got initiation from Prabhupada, he also didn't have any Guru Dakshin to give Prabhupada. And he apologized to Prabhupada. He said, Prabhupada, I'm sorry, I didn't have anything to give you for Guru Dakshin. But Prabhupada told him, he said, it's all right, you're giving your life. <laughs> I can remember <coughs> when I got second initiation. Must have been somewhere around either 71 or beginning of 72. Prabhupada came to LA. At that time I had gone to Dallas to start the temple in Dallas, Texas, along with a wonderful devotee named Mohanananda. And um, so but Prabhupada was in India, and it was just like one after another, there was one program after another. You've seen the picture of the Surat program, where all the devotees are buried in marigold mala garlands, and just, Prabhupada was getting, and he, he kept saying, you know, we kept wanting to send names of devotees for initiation, Prabhupada said, I'm coming, I'm coming, just now coming, just now coming, famous Indian say. <laughs> so, don't send the beads, don't waste it. Prabhupada didn't want to waste the postage to send the date beads. Mm -hmm. So finally Prabhupada came and my wife had been waiting for initiation for over a year. So then the question, because those days are six months, you've got uh, first initiation and after one year you've got second initiation. <laughs> they said, well, she's been waiting for one year. Prabhupada said, well, whatever, the wife follows the husband so she can take initiation. There was a couple other cases. Uh, they've been waiting for over a year. So Prabhupada called them up to his room. He asked the first boy, Who is Krishna? Yeah. He said, He's the Supreme Personality of God. Prasongi, you can take that from this. <laughs> <laughs> Second boy asked, Who's Lord Chaitanya? He's the most beneficent incarnation. Prabhupada said, No, he's Krishna himself. <laughs> <laughs> you can take initiation. <laughs> Other questions I remember. Those two questions I remember. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we had the fire sacrifice and everything, then Nandu Kumar was Prabhupada's servant. He said, you come one by one, and Prabhupada come upstairs to Prabhupada's room, and he'll give you the guy three mantra. So we were waiting and waiting, and then finally Nandu Kumar came, so there's some, Prabhupada has some appointment somewhere, so he'll come at noontime. You come at noontime, and then we'll give you the, we'll give you the guy three mantra. So then we came at noontime. And he said, Prabhupada's still busy, you come at, you know, you come at five o'clock. And then I said, but our, our ride back, because we come with all the Dallas devotees, the ride back to Dallas, actually we were in Houston, but we went to Dallas into Houston. So our ride back is leaving at three o'clock, we, we won't be here. So he went up, he came back down and said, Prabhupada said, all right, let them come on. So we had picked these, I don't know if you know a hydrangea, it's a special flower. It's not a flower, but it's a whole group of flowers and little balls and mm -hmm. they're sort of pinkish or bluish or whitish mm -hmm. colors with little four petaled flowers and a big ball like this. We saw them at Sandesh and uh, Mega's house around the apartment complex right there. So we picked each, my wife and I, we picked one of those to offer to Prabhupada. And we came upstairs and we walked into Prabhupada's room. First thing, Nanda Kumar got angry. All right, I told you to come one by one. You know why you came together? Prabhupada, they are husband and wife at his own. <laughs> so Prabhupada was sitting at a great big desk, you know, and he was on a big cushion. He looked like a little coward boy sitting on top of his cushion. He didn't wait for us to come around the side of his desk, sat right beside his cushion. So we're sitting there, 
And uh, uh, first Prabhupada told us how to count the mantras on our fingers, and he gave us some piece of paper, and he said, repeat after me, and we repeated all the Gayatri mantras after Prabhupada. Uh, then he went like that. And I understood he wanted me to take my kurta off. Because you know, I come with my kurta off, we don't know anything in there. So. Then I felt so, very funny in front of my spiritual master. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what Prabhupada had to deal with, I never wore a thread in my life. I didn't know where to put this arm up or this arm up. And <laughs> first thing was Prabhupada took the thread and he went <laughs> and opened it up. Still today, even at, even this time, half the time, because hopelessly it's angry, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> just, it was open. And I didn't know which hand to put, so probably just put it like a garland. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you can learn from your older, older God brothers how to do it. <laughs> so then, uh, somehow or other we managed to get some duction in front of 10 or 20 dollars or something, so we handed Prabhupada the elephant, ele envelope. He said, thank you very much, and then he looked at both of us, and I passed this instruction around to all the householders here. Prabhupada said, now you serve Krishna very enthusiastically as husband and wife. Hmm? And then we paid our obeisances, and we walked out of the room, and I remember that in Nectar Devotion it says, one should not fail to offer praise in the presence of the spiritual master. One line. And I thought I haven't said anything, you know. I didn't know what to do. And I had my kurta in my arms and you know <laughs> my japa mala and I was walking out of the out of the room, you know, and Prabhupada was already busy on his desk writing something. And I got to the door and I said, I haven't pray offered any praise. And I said, Jai Prabhupada <laughs> And Prabhupada looked up with one of those smiles like a million suns rising. <laughs> 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 When Prabhupada came to London uh, in 71, we had about, I think there were only three ladies in the temple because the devotees had all gone off to India. Gurudas and Yamuna, Jamal Krishna and Madri and Shamsundar and Malati, they'd all gone with Prabhupada to India. Mukunda went back to America with Janaki. And so we were not too many devotees, we were about 20 devotees and about three ladies. One of the girls was French, her name was Mundakini. Hmm. And Prabhupada came to London, he had just been in Russia. Prabhupada went there to Russia for a visit and during his time in Russia, he was just there for a few days they had met this one Russian boy who was a very good potential to be a devotee. He was very seriously interested and he had asked many questions to Prabhupada. So, when Prabhupada came to London, he was looking for a girl to go there to Russia to marry that boy. <laughs> yeah. He is a new devotee, you know, so he thought it would be the, the best thing to do was get, no associations. <laughs> get him married to a good devotee. <laughs> so this French girl, Mundakini, she was recruited. She was given, she was told, you go to Russia, you get married to this one. Prabhupada had initiated that boy, Ananta Sakti. Huh? Ananta Sakti? He passed away some years ago. I think he told her side that she was praying very hard to see the Prabhupada. And she had just come from France and she was seeing Prabhupada. Prabhupada, please give me some special instructions. Special <laughs> 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 instructions. <laughs> yes, she really got the mercy. <laughs> and Russia, of course, was communist at that time, but was closed up. But, you know, she took it very seriously. She began reading all Prabhupada's uh, lectures and conversations there with, the, with uh, Dr. Chokosti, uh, the professor of Asian studies who Prabhupada met. And she took it very ser seriously and she did go there for some time and certainly helped with the preaching. But 
you can understand it's not uh, what was the mood of the devotees in those days that we would take such we would accept the most difficult challenge given by Prabhupada and we would take it as mercy the young girl to go to a young woman to go to Russia I mean it's Russia. <laughs> to marry a man there never met before in her life and of course, Hare Krishna was one of the big evils in Russia in those days. The KGB had marked three enemies of their socialist movement in Russia. One was Coca-Cola. One was the, the Beatles. And the third one was Hare Krishna. <laughs> So it was a big threat. They didn't want Hare Krishna movement spread around Russia. But, you know, this young woman was ready, willing to go there to, to marry a man she'd never met before and to preach Krishna consciousness. So that kind of dedication, devotees, they, they were so surrendered, we were so much we had so much faith in Prabhupada that Prabhupada wants us to do this. We have to do it. There was no question of, oh, impossible, oh, I'm not going to do this. We have a god brother named Gopal who lives in Vrindavan now. And I guess it was, I think it was Bombay or someplace. And they were all sitting in the room, a whole bunch of devotees. And some gentleman came and he said, uh, Swamiji, you should open up a temple in Singapore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Prabhupada looked around all the devotees, who wants to go to Singapore to open a temple? <laughs> so Gopal was thinking, there's all so many older God brothers here, I should let them have first shot. You know? Everybody just sort of hit between. <laughs> nobody wanted to be proper. Was in Bombay. Nobody wanted to be Bombay. Be, not being with proper. So everybody was sort of hiding their face, you know. So he said, "Okay." He said, "Prabhupada, I'll go." He said, "All right. Tomorrow you must get your visa and go." Wow. <laughs> just like that. So he went there. He preached in Singapore. He preached in Malaysia. And now Krishna is keeping him from now. Now he's. His heart is very bad. He had a heart attack. So after he got a heart attack, he left everything. He just came to Vrindavan. And one devotee was letting him stay in his apartment in, in MBT, <coughs> executing his Christian consciousness. He's got not much days left. So Krishna made, he was ready to surrender, so Krishna made all the He had no money, but somehow some devotee told him to stay in my apartment in MBT, one of the nicest places. He was, Surrender to Krishna, Krishna will take care of the Torah. When Prabhupada came to London, there was one Indian family, Guptas. Uh, they had, somehow they had met the devotees and they were very attracted to Prabhupada and they took initiation from Prabhupada. Shirodakshai, Vishnu, and Kirtida, his wife Kirtida. And they had three sons. The three boys, the, for the grown up now. Yeah. One is here in India, right? Kanpur or somewhere? Mm -hmm. yeah? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, Prabhupada liked him very much, and so he asked this Mr. Gupta, the Shirodakshai Vishnu, that I need your help in India because Prabhupada had come here to India and he didn't have anybody really to help him. He didn't have Pali. There was no Indian people working with him, helping him. So he brought this Jirudakshai Vishnu, Mr. Gupta. He came here and he helped. And it was through him they got the land in Vrindavan from that Mrs. Sara. That's right, yeah. Because they had brought the, the municipality had a special program to honor Sri the Prabhupada making Vrindavan famous all over the world. And the devotees came there to be kirtan. So Mr. Sarat, Mr. and Mrs. Sarat became so uh, enamored of the devotee. Kirtan was ecstatic. No, nobody does kirtan like we do. You know? <laughs> so after the program, they told Prabhupada that we have some land. We'd like to give it to you. 
So then he told uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, he became Mr. Lakshay, he said, you, you stay here and idolize him. So then there was somebody else, who, another spiritual lady who wanted that land. Although she's actually, uh, she's also famous for why we dance the way we do it. <laughs> because she came to Los Angeles with all her followers in the old LA temple. And they were having kirtan and dancing. And Prabhupada got down at Piazza Sun and began dancing. And they started jumping. And Prabhupada started jumping. And before, we just sort of, you know, went like this. You know, the Swami said very stably and stolidly. You know. So, anyway, they started jumping. And Prabhupada started leaping in the air in the kirtan. And he called the Brahmana. And he, they called the Brahmana. And Prabhupada's jumping. What are you what are talking about? Prabhupada's jumping. What are you talking about? In the kirtan, Prabhupada is jumping, and kirtan has never been the same since. Anyway, this lady, she also wanted to get that piece of land that was not far from her ashram. So they began to put pressure on the Saraj. So then she didn't know what to do, and, and um, Shiradakshay was going there every day. Finally she said, all right, let Radharani decide. Because he used to live in Gobindabad, we've done kirtan there at their house, and so many things. So. And uh, so we'll let Radharani decide. So she wrote yes and no on two pieces of paper, folded them up, rolled them around, and dropped them on Radharani's feet. And then she actually picked one, opened up, and said yes. And during the 40th anniversary, now she's moved from that house, but this Kashi Nasarab is no longer there, but she's still there. Gita Devi Sarab. And she's very humble. We always try to get her to speak it. Prabhupada disappears there, but she will never speak. But anyway, she invited all the devotees to come to her new flat and see those deities that decided that Krishna, because it was 40th anniversary of Krishna Balaram Mandir. So we all went there, we could kirtan in her house, we took prasad, it was very, she, she loves Prabhupada so much. Back to her. Sachi Dulal, he's from Gohati. Her family also gave the land in Gohati. One other story, very interesting, because Tittenhurst was reminding me that they were all staying there in John Linden's estate, and but Shamsun was a carpenter, so he was doing some carpentry work to fix it up, and that's why the devotees were staying free there. But the supervisor, he would, would overlook seeing the work, he would always come very late and look very tired. <laughs> so Shamsun said, why are you always so tired? He said, well, I can't sleep because there's all these rats running up in the rafters at night. And his wife said, no, no, it's not rats, it's ghosts. Said, no such thing as ghosts. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's ghosts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, one day they told Prabhupada about this, this manager that he can't come early because, because the ghosts are haunting his house. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada told the devotees that you go there to his house, you do kirtan, and you dance in a circle counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You dance at a, you do kirtan very loudly and dance counterclockwise. You know? Counterclockwise. <laughs> so, uh, so they told him, and then they, all the ghosts will leave. So then they told the man he didn't have it, want to have anything to do with it. It's not ghosts, it's rats. <laughs> but anyway, he got overruled by the home ministry. <laughs> she wanted the kirtan. Uh, so anyway, she invited all the devotees over. They did kirtan, dancing counterclockwise. You know, and, and since they were meat eaters, but they only they only accepted some. They cut up some fruit and served the devotees some fruit prasad. Next day, he showed up bright and early. You know, he said he drove away all the rats. He said, "No, sir. He they got rid of all the ghosts." <laughs> no more problem. No more problem. We were living in Bury Place in London. It was a rented house. It was a small place. Prabhupada's room was on the second floor. The temple was on the ground floor. Prasadam was in the basement. And the area of each floor was about maybe one, about 20% of the size of this room. You know, really small. And we had Radha Landa Nishwara, 
and Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. Mandakini was, she was doing all the puja, she was the only Brahmana. And Prabhupada was on the second floor. The third floor was the ladies' ashram, and the fourth floor and fifth floor were for the brahmacharis, the men. So uh, when Keshava came, Keshava was a, a leading devotee from Los Angeles and San Francisco, and he had been sent by Prabhupada to help us to develop the yatra there in London and to teach us how to do Sankirtan. So he was there and he came to London and he saw the situation and then he said that this room, because the, the idea was Prabhupada would have the second floor, and he said this room is not suitable for Prabhupada, it's not enough, it's not adequate for Prabhupada. So he wrote to Prabhupada to say to Prabhupada that, Prabhupada, we will get you a hotel room when you come. There are some nice hotels here, we will get you a nice hotel room. But Prabhupada wrote back and said, I don't want to stay in any hotel. I want to stay in the temple. He said, that room is fine for me, it's quite adequate for me. You don't have to worry. So, these kind of words from Srila Prabhupada was with, it helped to increase our great our faith and how endearing we were all were to Srila Prabhupada, how we loved him so much, that he was so much concerned to be with the devotees. He didn't separate himself from us at all. Later on, when we got Bhaktivedanta Manor, then we could give better quarters to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada would appreciate it. I remember also in Brooklyn, the old Henry Street Center, Prabhupada had some quarters there. And he, and he brought, I remember he had some guests in and he said, look at these rooms, they've given me what you think, quite nice, huh? very nice. <laughs> so Prabhupada, you know, he's appreciating something, but also he could be very tolerant. He could tolerate. He went to Bhubaneswar and Gorkarinda Maharaj was living in the mud hut in Bhubaneswar and there was another mud hut. Prabhupada said, I will live in the other mud hut. <laughs> so Gorkarinda Maharaj was in one mud hut and he lived in, Prabhupada lived in the other one. And all the devotees, we camped around on the land. At that time there was no temple building, there was nothing. The land had been donated to Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada sent Gorgovinda Maharaj there, his Aurya disciple, to go there and develop it. So it was really the boondocks, it was away from everything. But Prabhupada came there and he came there to Bhubaneswar, he came there from Hong Kong. <laughs> when he went to Hong Kong, Barry John had arranged Rolls Royce car to pick him up from the airport. <laughs> and he lived in a, he had a penthouse suite also in a five-star hotel. And the reporters were amazed and they were saying, you know, you're a Swamiji and you're living like this. But Prabhupada said to them, yes, if I sat under a tree, you would not come to see me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to show his detachment, immediately after he left Hong Kong, he went to Bhubaneswar and he lived in the mud hut. And he was showing that he requested, that time he requested Bhagwat, who is now with Godiamat, Bhagwat Maharaj. He told him, he said, Gorgovinda Maharaj said, I don't have any men. Prabhupada said, the fat one. <laughs> there was one devotee, you know, the, they called him the fat, Prabhupada called him the fat one. <laughs> he said, he can stay here. Right? <laughs> and so, Bhagavad was recruited to stay there with Gorgavinda Maharaj. And Prabhupada told the devotees how to live there. He said, you don't need to buy soap. You just take the mud and you smear it on your body. He said, it's very good for health. He said, don't go and buy all these things 
you know, nowadays they have soaps and liquid soap and this and that, you know. Prophet, you just take the mud from the ground and you smear it on the body. It's very healthy. So in this way Prabhupada was instructing all of us how to practice simple living and high thinking. So he's getting late, so we'll wind it up with one more pastime. Because just, I guess it was, was it? So the 15, we had the 40th anniversary of Krishna Balaram Temple, and we managed to get Survi, who was in Hong Kong, previously staying in Hong Kong, and he came there after many, many, many years. He was a little bit out of it for a while, and every year at the anniversary of the temple, we all hear the pastimes, how Prabhupada was always angry with Survi, that this isn't right, that's not right. He was jati, the he couldn't get cement because it, was, it wasn't like nowadays it meant you had to get permission from the government to buy cement, to buy bricks. It was always that problem. It was always angry. Everybody was saying, we didn't want to be serving at all. Uh, we didn't want to be in his shoes. And we always heard that side of the story. Uh, you know, when, when Prabhupada get angry with serving, then nobody wanted to go in Prabhupada's room. It's like the Shringadev. <laughs> so this 40th anniversary, Serbi came. He told his side of the story. He said, I was in ecstasy. Because Prabhupada was always criticizing me. That means Prabhupada was caring about me and he was uh, training me, it's personally training me in spiritual life. I was in ecstasy. And we always, so we always heard the other side of the story. We got the Serbi side of the story. By me. He was in ecstasy. See the Prabhupada ki So, Mataji can connect it from Maharaj. 
and I call Anuradha Mataji. You can get from Facebook also. Facebook, no? The quality will be low. Mm -hmm. Anuradha Mataji from Ramakrishna Kavishwetta, yes. Be careful, it's a very good one. Anuradha Mataji, if you can collect it from Prabhu. Be careful! We have Bhumaka Mataji, Bhumaka L. Yeah, Bhumaka Mataji, please collect from Maharaj. And Malika Arjuna Prabhu, please take from Prabhu. Okay, let's all chant one time loudly. Hare Krishna, please. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Mataji, please come and tell it from Maharaj, please. Muni Lakshma Mataji. Muni Lakshma Mataji, please come. And Nirmala Devi Mataji. Yes. So Muni Lakshma Mataji, please come up from Maharaj. And Nirmala Mataji, please come up from the Muda. So thank you, it's so nice that uh, so all of you can also take such spiritual commitment, get in touch with the Siksha committee so that you all can also progress. A couple of announcements and then we can thank the day so if I can have your attention for five minutes, please. Today is uh, birthday of our uh, dear Devotee Sudhamani Haripriya Mataji. So she is uh, sponsoring the prasadam and she is requesting devotees to please pray for her spiritual consist consistency. Can you chant one time, please, for her? Please connect the prasadam garment from Prabhu Mataji. The other you can come over. Jita Shodi Mataji, Sandhya Kedlaya Mataji, K. Prem Kumar Prabhu, and Hanuman, Hanuman Tattva Harappa. These are all donors for one square foot of land, along with Narasim Mataji the Prabhu, and Kaveri Narayan and Shashwat Raj Devanan family has donated five square feet of land. So these wonderful donors have done and their family spiritual life for one time. Hare Krishna Mahamantra, please. So the, the one of the most beautiful outreach festivals, Paniyati, is coming up. So we will be celebrating the Paniyati festival on July the 1st. And we'll be going to Sri Lanka So we want is everyone can join us for this um, festivity. We have to only give a donation of 500 rupees per head. So Bhakti Buksha leaders are taking the initiative. Last year we had 1,500 devotees and we're trying to double it this year. So with all of your blessings and your initiative, we can get more and more devotees to come to the shores of Kaveri where we can have Paniyati and Snanayatra. So please do join us for Paniyati. Register your name at the book counter or with your Bhakti Vichya readers. Yes, and uh, we will have the association of His Holiness Bhakti Vinod Swami Maharaj this time. And, uh, okay, so before Janmashtami, on Janmashtami day we are playing the foundation of the new temple, Stamba, uh, in our new site. So any donors who give the donations of one square feet before Janmashtami will have the name written. So it's a glorious opportunity given that it is the month of Purushottama. So if you can kindly do it, that will be nice. It's also the month of Purushottama and like Prabhu said, the three important instruction is Krishna Dev and one of that is donating for the Brahmanas. So it's a very nice opportunity for us. We have two wonderful Vaishnavas today with us. We won't get such an opportunity. So if you all want, you can kindly contribute some money you want to contribute. I request Radhapati Prabhu 
Sudhimar the Shila Prabhupada, so how to give your contributions for Maharaj and for Prabhu to Radhakati Prabhu and he will collect it. We are also doing Purushottam programs in everyone's house, so if you want to do it in your house, contact the BDG counter or contact us so that we can have it done in your house. Prabhu was saying, Dinabandhi Prabhu was saying in the class that the Gnasta should give some contributions. So we have, we have launched the recurring seva services for devotees and well wishes of Iskand Seshadipuram. So you can contribute any amount on a weekly or monthly basis. It will be automatically charged on your card after one payment. And thereafter you can avail other facilities. This will be sent out in all the groups, so you all can please ensure that you participate in that. It's a very nice thing, you can start up in the month of Purushottama. Okay, next Sunday is the most blissful Ekadashi called as Parama Ekadashi. Parama Ekadashi ki jao. It only comes once in three years. This Sunday is Bhakti Vigna Nashina Shivaya Vichy. Guru Vindhu Vichy. So, so the Ekadashi is there next Sunday. So we are very, 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 very fortunate. So it is very advisable that if you can do more number of, uh, more amount of devotional service, so we are requesting devotees to come from Mangalayati on that day. So we can make a house from Mangalayati next Sunday, plan for now, come from Mangalayati next Sunday, let's do a full house, Jagannath will take, see you, bless you, and you can do a Jagannath darshan. Next Sunday, morning Friday, here. Also, it is exceptional and extraordinary, so if you want, you can donate anything in time or cash. And yes, from tomorrow, from June 3rd to June 13th, this great Sarvadharma Prabhu will be here. So every evening we will have Katha. So morning evening Katha will be here, Purushottam Mantra will be this way. So kindly come and take association. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, then we can serve. No, for one week. That is for the announcement. So let's stand one time. Hare Krishna for all the devotees who have come up today. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You see many new devotees who have come for the first time to our temple. So, for them one time we can try and have a